Hey everybody, it's Paul Darcy here. It's Waste Nights Second Edition, and I am just putting this at the very beginning of this video because I filmed Nelly <laughs> out of order. It should have been Lisa Gomez's turn, but we're going to continue on. You're going to see the episode here in a second. We, I did have Nelly go. It was not her turn. She should be going after Lisa Gomez. I don't think it's going to mess anything up. I'm just going to be the next two episodes. Lisa's going to get two turns in a row, basically. So I just wanted to preempt that right here before everyone's screaming, going, what are you doing? Where, what happened to the episode with Lisa? It's coming. It's coming. All right, let's get into our episode uh, this time. And yes, Nelly will be going out of turn two times in a row, but then next two episodes, we're going to have Lisa going two in a row. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back to Waste Nights, second edition. We're playing Safe Haven. It's Nelly's turn. I got a plan for her. She's sitting here on a plot marker, and we don't have any space in our motorcycle. So that's a bit of an issue because if we get something to carry, uh, we may not be able to carry it. So let's go over to our player character area. I have a plan as to what we're going to do. And then we're going to come back and have Nelly take her couple actions. All right, so the plan goes like this. We have dried meat 234. Uh, it takes up one vehicle slot. It has a value of two. We can do a camp action right now and heal four wounds. And I think we're going to do that. We probably needed this uh, dried meat to do something with guard dogs. I don't know. But we are going to eat it. That's going to get rid of one, two, three, four wounds. So we are completely healed, but we do lose the dried meat. So there's that. We don't have that anymore. It's gone. Uh, <clears throat> so our first action is a camp action. All right, there we go. And we don't have anything to repair. We've got no damage on our dirt bike. We have no damage on our weapons and armor. So the camp action was that. And we have no medicine to go ahead and remove the radiation poisoning, but we might be able to find some later on. All right, back to the board we go. To continue Nelly's turn. All right, I have a feeling this is going to be a very short episode, but I don't have any time. So here we go. We're on a plot marker, and we're also on a biohazard space. Uh, and we're going to see if we can collect this plot marker. We're on 32. So if we take a look at uh, entry 32 in the book here, what does it say? C110. So we're going to grab out the great big book of tales and we're going to, I'm going to leaf through oh, as I shake the table completely to see if I can find entry 110. Okay, so I found entry 110. It says, Perth trades on a regular basis with dugouts, a mining community with a long history. Its inhabitants buy machine parts disassembled from ships. A group of specialists resides there. Its members might build a battering ram, ideal to pierce the barricade on the bridge. The problem is, no caravan has returned from dugouts for a few weeks now. Hmm. All right, some strange Cerbero construct buried itself in the sand like a juvenile ant lion. It went, I went scouting. I saw funnels 20 meters deep and inside pieces of junk, dried carcasses, rent tinted sand. You're telling your story and people from dugouts are standing around and listening. I knew that I only had one choice. You can choose. I had to guide the caravan so that it would evade the ambush, you say, or tear that bastard apart. You strike with your open hand with a fist. Uh, let's guide the caravan since we are basically a stalker. We'll do that. 139. We're going to guide the caravan. <clears throat> We're retelling the tale. Oh my goodness, it's a long one. So we have to test survival three. If you sacrifice your next action from this or the next turn, this or the next turn, you would obtain two additional successes. Oh my goodness, our survival is two green dice and we need three success. We can give up our first turn next time, uh, which means we're probably just going to be able to have one turn. I wonder if we should go ahead and do that, get two successes, or just risk it uh, and go ahead and... Yeah, I don't know. All right, um, I think we're going to go ahead and test survival, and I do think we are not going to give up our one of our actions next time. We don't have an action right now, so we did a camp action, and now we're doing a plot. So I'm going to get out the dice tray, readjust the camera a little bit. We're going to be rolling two green dice. We need three successes. Let's hope we can get it. All right, readjust the camera so I can get the dice tower in here. All right, we need three successes. Come on need them oh yes nailed it with four not a problem at all now of course i have to find the entry again in here uh and figure out 
what the four successes are all about. Okay, so it says pass. We were supposed to cover this stretch of the desert in a, in a five hours tops. It took us almost two days in the end. I walked first, hitting the ground with a long stick watching. The caravan followed, and that's how we finally reached some rocks. All future transports must avoid this area, otherwise they'll end up just like the former ones. You explain, and people around start patting you on the back. The murderous machine right on the trade route is the last thing they expected. Alright, so we gain an experience, we draw one gear card. Note in the Outback Chronicles that the battering ram is made for you. Take the challenge token from your space and place it on the plot sheet. Alright, so we've got four challenge tokens now. Uh, and let's see, so we, we gain one experience and we draw a gear co card and we now have the battering ram is made for you. Alright, let's go to our player area and set that up. All right, once again, Nelly with the success. So I just flipped the card over that I used for the meat, and the battering ram is made for you. So we know that when we get to the island, possibly we get an experience. So now we have 11 experience. We had 10, we're at 11 experience. We can level up again here. We've already got three level ups. We have danger sense. We can draw two uh, encounter cards and choose which one we want. Nooks and crannies, we can go through craters for one turn or one only. Uh, one movement point only, and eagle-eyed, whenever we get resources, we just grab another resource of our choice. All right, that's going to be the end of Nelly's turn. We do get a gear card, though, as well. So from the bottom of the deck, uh, this little draw deck, I don't know what it is. What do we find for a gear card? We get a lucky charm. The lucky charm says, you may discard this card to reroll up to two of your dice in any roll, even rolled by an enemy or another knight. The new results must be accepted. Cool! Uh, and it looks like we can go ahead and uh, it's just part of our gear. It doesn't take a space though, or does it? I don't think it takes a space. We just hang it around our neck. So I'm going to put it here. So we have a lucky charm we can re-roll now. That's pretty cool. All right, back to the main board. And I think we're going to be wrapping up our episode for today. Uh, yeah, because this has a little binocular symbol on it. And I do believe that means it doesn't take a gear space. So we have two for cogs. We have one gear space left. So the main board and wrap up. All right, that was a relatively quick episode. Uh, we're sitting in a biohazard space. That doesn't matter. It's only when you move into these spaces where things happen. So that was Nellie's turn. We're going to have to get her motoring all the way over to Perth next episode if we can. She has one gas can. Uh, not terrible. But we didn't give up one of her actions. She's going to have two actions next time. I think we might do a scavenge get her as much gas as possible and then see if we can motor right to Perth because it will be turn eight uh, next time at the end of Lisa Gomez's turn. So yeah, there's that. All right, did I do Nelly twice in a row? I think I just did Nelly twice in a row, didn't I? Which is out of sequence. Oh my goodness. Well, I did it out of sequence, unfortunately, uh, because it was supposed to be I believe Lisa Gomez's turn. This is what happens when you don't film in a few days. All right, I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to go ahead uh, and we're going to say Lisa's going to go for the next episode. I apologize for getting it out of order. I don't think it's going to make too big a difference. Uh, so that was basically Nelly's first turn. They're kind of independent for the next turn. If you follow me, I hope that's going to make sense. We're going to do Lisa in the next episode. All right, so thanks so much for watching a lot. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, and likes. This is Waste Night 2nd Edition, and I did things out of order, but okay. Uh, we'll do Lisa Gomez in the next episode. Thanks so much, and we'll see you then.